Hello, Fremont family. Today we're going to talk about Acts chapter 20. And Acts chapter 20 just comes on the heels of a remarkable story of uh, what happens in the town of Ephesus. And you might remember that Acts 19 ends with a, a near riot in Ephesus. And so Acts 20 begins with an uproar. Uh, and an uproar in which Paul wanted to go and talk to the the crowd that was so had gone so crazy uh, against what he and his disciples were saying. Um, Paul uh, was not allowed to go into that uh, that riotous crowd, but um, after the uproar was ended, he wanted to encourage the disciples there, and he says goodbye to them. Uh, then. There's going to be a story that we're going to look at. That's what this blank spot is. And then Acts 20 also has just a lot of travel. Have you noticed in Acts how the gospel is spreading? This good news is spreading from place to place to place to place. And Paul is, is willing to, to take himself to all these different places to spread the good news of the gospel. And the chapter ends with, with him calling the uh, Ephesian elders back together and through tears uh, says goodbye to them as he heads to Jerusalem. But I wanted to share with you uh, this, the, and focus just in this time on this strange story of Eutychus. The strange story of, of Eutychus. And I'm going to read for us uh, just this story again. It says this, on the first day of the week, when we, Luke, uh, was part of this group, was when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day. He prolonged his speech until midnight. Now, note that. Note that uh, some of you are probably thinking about some times that you were listening to a sermon that went on a little too long. Maybe I preached one. Maybe you've been in another church that just went on and on and on and on. Well, this is your passage right here. This is your passage. The Bible can relate to you. Uh, so anyway, the story goes on. It says, There were many lamps in the upper room where we were gathered, and a young man named Eutychus, sitting at the window, sank into a deep sleep. How many of you are saying amen to that right now? Uh, this man uh, falls into a deep sleep as Paul goes on and on and on. And it even says, as Paul talked still longer and being overcome by sleep, it says, he fell down from the third story of this building where they were and was taken up dead. A, a tragedy, really, a tragedy, but um, it's got a good ending, so hang on. So it says, when Paul went down, bent over him, takes him in his arms and said, do not be alarmed. His life is in him. And when Paul had gone up and had broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them, note this, a long while until daybreak and so departed. And then here's this last verse. And note the wording. I'm reading from the ESV version, English Standard Version. It says, they took the youth away alive. And we're not a little comforted. I love that. I looked it up in the original language, and that's exactly how it said. They were not a little comforted. Don't you love the the kind of the understatedness of this? I mean, Paul has 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 through the power of, of God's Spirit helped raise this man, fell asleep listening to Paul, raised him back from, from death. And the disciples were not a little comforted. I love the understatement of that. I love the authenticity of this, that, that all of us can relate to listening to teaching maybe that's gone on and on and on. And here's this story, this strange story of Eutychus falling, be, dying because of the fall. Paul, uh, through the God's Spirit, raising him from the dead, and the result is the disciples were not a little comforted. And I just wonder how many of us today need some sort of sign, some sort of, of thing to be reminded of that makes us not a little comforted. In other words, that brings us great comfort. What has God done in your life 
that has brought you not a little comfort, but a great amount of comfort. Today, as you read through Acts chapter 20, I pray that you would know the God of all comfort, the God of all comfort who comforts us in whatever is afflicting us. To him be the glory. Amen.